Aloha and happy Earth Day. I am your host, Winston Welch, and I am delighted that you are joining us again today for this special edition of Out and About, where every other week we explore a variety of topics, events, organizations, and the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and world. As a disclaimer, any views or opinions expressed by me are strictly my own and not connected with any organization. That said, joining me today in the studio, it's my great pleasure to have Scott Foster, who is a communication strategy consultant, public opinion management expert, and advocate for the LGBTQ community for decades. So thank you uh, for coming to the show today and, and being on here and uh, sharing your time. Mahalo, Winston. It's an honor to be here. Well, you know, this show was uh, when we originally conceived of it, when we were talking with Jay Fidel, our amazing executive producer, he wanted to talk, one of the focuses he wanted to talk about was LGBTQ um, areas, and those have traditionally been the most popular shows that I have here, but I've, what I really have intended to do from the very beginning was to have our, 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 our sage um, folks who've been on the scene for a long time fighting for stuff that they, maybe young people don't even know right, really existed, and the rights that we take for granted today just didn't magically appear. Uh, they were hard-won battles that, that go back decades, and well, maybe even longer than that. Longer um, than that, yes. And so you are one of those luminaries who I think deserves a, a tremendous uh, deal of credit and respect. And when, uh, when I was you know, doing some research for the show and at uh, scottfoster.org, so if you guys want to go there and learn about a, a wonderful guy doing a lot of great stuff over, over the, the, the decades and continuing to do amazing things, go to scottfoster.org. Uh, I found that you, I don't know, would you say that you became an accidental advocate or um, how did you get started in the whole movement of let's concentrate specifically on LGBT rights or maybe in those days we just maybe said gay rights? Well, uh, quickly, um, I'm from Oklahoma originally, grew up there, was there until I was 42 years old and uh, that uh, uh, Oklahoma is the Bible, the, ba uh, the, the buckle of the Bible belt, as they call it. And uh, uh, we had, uh, we were all very closeted, had to be. But there was a large, very active LGBT community there. And uh, uh, I'll, I'll use the, the term gay with the capital G, mm -hmm. uh, LGBTQ, Whatever, whatever banner you stand under, yeah. uh, uh, gay is, is shorthand. Shorthand. Okay. Uh, uh, when Stonewall happened, uh, that was the first really. It opened all of our eyes that we were not alone, because Stonewall was the first time in history that that gay people had actually stood up and fought for their fought back against the police. And fought back against the police for, for what? For those folks that don't know what Stonewall is, which there's a number of them out there, what was the, that? The Stonewall Bar uh, was and remains, uh, uh, in fact, President uh, Obama uh, uh, was talking about making it a national monument. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that happened or not. I don't think so, but it, it's still there in New York City, uh, in the village. And it, uh, the day, of, coincidentally, of Judy Garland's funeral. Okay. The very day. The very day of okay. Judy Garland's funeral, the, the cops uh, raided the bar. Now, in, the, in those days, you could be arrested for just being in a gay bar. Right. Stop there. Yeah. You know, or start there. Uh, and uh, it was a large group of, of uh, TVTS people and drag queens and just uh, everyday gay people stopping on their way home from Garland's funeral for a drink. And all hell broke loose. The, the fight went on, and I mean, it was a street fight. Police cars set on fire, pulled up in the bar for two days. And uh, by the time that was over, the police had learned, maybe we better start taking a different tact with gay people. And this is what year? What was Stonewall? Six, 60, uh, I've forgotten. 16, Six, 68, 68, 68, I believe. 68, 69. That. So that message went off, went around the country. Yeah. The next thing that happened was there was a, uh, 
uh, a lady by the name of Anita Bryant. Yes. She was Miss Oklahoma. She was the darling of, of uh, uh, the nation. She had a great singing voice, was very, very popular. She became the spokesperson for the orange juice industry in Florida. And she was also a radical Christian fundamentalist right. Mm -hmm. And she started a proposition in Florida to fire all of the gay school teachers. Right. Because of Stonewall, I believe, for the first time, gay people around the country rallied and sent money to Florida to help. And this is before the internet. So oh, yes, maybe before, did, before took out the a, fax machine. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but, right. Before cell phones, they took out a paper check and they maybe saw an ad in uh, the Advocate magazine or some, some yes. local publication and said, this is where you can send money. So that started it. Well, somewhere in there, uh, uh, Harvey Milk had been elected a few years later. Uh, Harvey Milk had been elected in, in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, gay community was really on a political roll. We defeated Anita Bryant, and this was a big deal. I mean, this was like taking down a saint. Yes. This was a big deal. And then the same thing, she moved her, uh, her uh, focus on California. They tried to do the same thing there. And we, again, the community around the country rallied and we stopped it. Now, uh, I was in Oklahoma City. There was a great gay community there, but you still couldn't be out. I started on, started on the road traveling. Uh, my original career was in the entertainment industry. I managed, uh, 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 well, the music industry, actually, pop music. I managed uh, the sales and marketing of 105 different labels, including all of Motown. and. Wow. London Records and Atlantic, and I had all the big pop hits of the, of the late 60s and 70s. Oh, fine. So I was sort of out of Oklahoma until my parents' health started failing, and I had to come back. And uh, uh, then AIDS hit, and uh, our community was organized well enough by then to bring a very prominent doctor whose name escapes me from California to show us slides of Carposi's sarcoma. Mm -hmm. Shortly after that, now we're talking about 85. Yeah. I moved to LA. I was there for two years in the entertainment industry. It was a very sad time to be in California. Yeah. In Los Angeles, people were dying right and left. You'd meet someone or close a deal on something, and the next thing you know, they were in the hospital or dead. Yeah. So I moved to Honolulu basically to get away from as much of it as I could because I'd been very involved with the movement on the mainland to do something about AIDS. Government was ignoring us. And I got to Honolulu and there wasn't even a newspaper here. So this is about 88 or something the, like that? No, this was 85. 85, okay. So I volunteered with what was then the Lesbian and Gay Community Center, okay. and I, that's when I began my writing in earnest. Okay. I'd always been a pretty good writer, but uh, all of a sudden I was writing about AIDS. We were doing fundraisers. We were going to the Capitol. We were lobbying for, for money, and Hawaii suddenly became very well organized politically. Unfortunately, we lost many of those people during the pandemic before the, the cocktail. But uh, 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 our little newsletter with the, the Gay Community Center, Gay and Les Lesbian and Gay Community Center, went from, I think, 400 a month in a little you know, paper news newsletter to 18,000 12-page tabloid wow. in 18 months. So your communications expertise was definitely utilized there well. My writing was appreciated, and all of a sudden people volunteered and got involved, and we had a real newspaper going. Do you think that it was actually AIDS that really... Uh, so we have the Briggs Initiative, it was and in California, was right. it? And then, uh, uh, then the, with Anita and 
Florida Orange Juice. They kicked her off the being spokesperson. Right. Uh, Harvey Milk was murdered. Harvey Milk was killed. And so you have some awareness at Stonewall. And so this is the 70s and an era of kind of freedom overall and, and testing boundaries all, all across the place, whether yes. it was women or, or ethnic minorities or whatever it was. You had this sense of uh, maybe freedom and chaos at the same time. It and then was, AIDS yes. hits hard, yes. right? And do you, do you attribute really the galvanization of our modern LGBT or gay identity, but the shorthand gay, um, to the, uh, the pandemic at that time? Uh, more than that, actually. To me, in fact, uh, we were talking earlier about, about that film. Uh, when We Rise? When We Rise. Yeah. I saw it, and this is what came out in that film, was it was the w rise of the women's movement, the continuation of the black movement, peace movement, Martin Luther King, et cetera, et cetera, and then the gay movement coming together mm -hmm. that created the modern Democratic Party. Right. We all joined forces under the party. Now, in Hawaii, what was a, a wonderful thing happened because up until some point, uh, everyone thought that uh, AIDS was just a gay male disease. Uh -huh. And then women started getting it. And that's when, to their great credit, the lesbian in Hawaii, for the first time, began communicating closely and working with the men's community. Because as you probably know, uh, we tend to be in two separate groups, which is too bad. Uh, it's not like it once was. They certainly, uh, the um, millennials, doesn't make any difference to them. But at that point in time, it, that was a big thing. Yep. The women coming together and did heroic work right along with the many heroes that were of that day. All right, so, and I think that was true nationwide that we, that we saw, especially lesbian women stepping up yes. and saying, "These are my gay brothers, and uh, we are we're, we're both oppressed in our different ways, but these folks need help right now, and we can I identify, sympathize with them more than your Absolutely. average Joe." Absolutely. So the modern coalescing and bringing together of what you think of the modern Democratic Party, the peace movement. Um, uh, oh yeah, certainly the peace movement was part of it. African American uh, women, Chicano movement, even at that point, or Ch Latino, or it was different names. Hispanic. It was, it was fledgling, but fledgling, it was there. And the yes. gay movement, and so you have all these things stirring together and creating a, a rich soup of, of yes, sort of exactly. liberation. And then we get into the '90s with big hair, a little bit more repression. <laughs> president who doesn't mention AIDS until the word AIDS until what '87 or something crazy like that. I mean, yes. it was many, many years until Ronald Reagan mentioned that. Uh, I don't think Reagan ever mentioned it. It was Bush the, the first, was the first mention, and, and uh, uh, I think Barbara had her picture taken with an, an AIDS baby. That's right, yes. I do remember that photo where she had her, yes. her picture taken with a baby, and that's how they sort of humanized it. This, this wasn't a gay disease. This was a human disease. We uh, created a chapter of the Names Project, which is the AIDS memorial quilt, for those that, that are too young to remember that. Uh, that was a huge, made a huge difference. Do you remember what year the, the AIDS Memorial quote was that about 88 or 89, something like that? or um, Somewhere in there. Somewhere yes. in there. I, in and, fact, and, Hawaii yeah. was the first state in the nation to bring the entire quilt and put it on display oh. by ourselves. Oh. They sent two people over from San Francisco to help us put it together. And I've forgotten how there were, we, it was at the Blaisdell Center, the old, the old, yeah. uh, arena, not the arena, but the exhibition hall. Exhibition hall. Yeah. And it covered the entire floor. And uh, what was awe inspiring to me about it was standing back and looking at the crowd coming through. It was young couples with babies and strollers. It was grandmothers and grandfathers. It was people of all ages, all races, and all descriptions. And uh, that, that did a lot to help us in Hawaii, as did Governor John Waikiki. He was so far ahead of the, many of the other governors 
and uh, he created an organization called the Governor's Committee on AIDS. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was able to, to uh, uh, work with them to pass uh, Hawaii's needle exchange program, which was, was AIDS prevention, and that was the first needle exchange program in the country that uh, was passed by a legislature. It's incredible to think of something uh, just so recently as that. Well, that. well, now we're looking at probably 30 years ago for that. And, and it's still mm -hmm. controversial in some areas like Indiana, where we saw Governor Pence preventing needle yes, exchange. Preventing needle and exchange. then you have mass outbreaks of hepatitis to HIV inside of those counties where they didn't have, where they don't have access to that. I, you have so many things that you've done over the years uh, with needle exchange, working for advocates' rights for uh, consumers, for insurance industry, the drug policy. Uh, medical marijuana issues, saving Waimea Valley, Hawaii Symphony. Um, oh, the nurse working with the nurses union, director of communications for Governor Cayetano. So many different things, and then all of the the LGBT stuff that you've done here. So uh, we got to take a short break, and we'll come back and talk about maybe some of those. Obviously, we're going to have to continue this conversation because your list is is incredible, and uh, I want to do it do justice as best as we can. But as you can see, we are talking with a luminary in. Uh, the field of, of, of human rights, uh, we can call them gay rights, but uh, we'll call them human rights because we're humans and when we liberate ourselves, we're liberating everyone. I'm with Scott Foster today, a communication strategy consultant, public opinion management expert, and advocate for the LGBTQ community, with shorthand for gay, uh, for decades. Uh, we'll be back in a minute, so stay tuned for more of the story, and you can uh, follow along with us if you want to go to his website, scottfoster.org. See you Aloha, I'm Gwen Harris, the host here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of the supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you'd go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thanks so much. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go Beyond the Lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Aloha, we are back and we're live here on Earth Day 2019. I am Winston Welch and this is Out and About on the Think Tech Live streaming network series talking with Scott Foster, communication strategy consultant, public opinion management expert, and advocate for the LGBTQ community for decades. So as we mentioned right before the break, uh, you, you'd had this sort of background working with uh, with the community and in, in various facets without specifically going into some of them. But uh, one of the things I, I was curious about, did you ever come out to your parents and, and talk to them about that? Was that a discussion you were able to have? Uh, most of my uh, current friends don't believe it when I tell them that I, I am, was a real bisexual. I had great relationships with women. I yeah. mean, very enjoyable to the point of near marriage once yeah and the only reason i didn't is i met charlie okay and i'll leave it at that <laughs> but i knew that uh, i didn't want to ruin her life and it was a very very unhappy breakup but uh, i didn't tell her i just kind of broke it off okay as far as my parents were were concerned it in those days, if you didn't have to, there was no reason to, mm -hmm. because they wouldn't have understood it, and I just didn't. I had come out to myself, though, mm -hmm. which is the most important part of it. And how old were you when you were able to make that realization? Uh, 22, 23. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, and that's the most important one, like you said. And there's a certain generation where they just... They couldn't understand it. Does that mean you're going to put a bowl on your food and dance around in a, in a you know, in a, exactly. a tutu or what does that exactly mean? And 
I think probably, as we all know by now, everyone is somewhere on the Kinsey scale uh -huh. um, of that. I think he does a two to seven, but I would yeah. maybe shrink it from a, or a one to seven, but maybe it's really a two to five on there. But yeah. you all can decide for yourselves where you are on the Kinsey scale. But that's why uh, we have this acronym of the LGBTQ, or as we were saying during the break, the new, the new one is the SOGI, Sexual Orientation Gender Identity, because the young people today, and you probably didn't see this one coming, is the, uh, the younger than the millennials, or the millennials and younger than the zennials, like, I'm not sure what we're calling them, um, they're, they're not even identifying as a gender, um, or they're gender fluid, or agender, um, yes. or, and, and, and they don't want to be put in any sort of box at all, together, at all. But for our generation, I think it was important that you classify yourself as one thing. So while you may identify with the B in LGBT, you politically had to identify with the G. Um, well, Hawaii uh, was, very, was and remains very unusual in that people used to say that the only, the only uh, L gay leadership in Hawaii were Howleys from the mainland because they could come out, their families were on the mainland. The locals in Hawaii, very difficult, uh, depending on the community you're from. So that has always been a difficulty in Hawaii, and still is. It's, it, uh, uh, now maybe, maybe the, the uh, millennials won't have that problem quite as much. We have changed public perception. Thank goodness, to the point that uh, the day will come. But with this new right wing administration in Washington, I read just yesterday there are three gay cases headed to the Supreme Court right now that could take away job protection, for example, and begin chiseling away not only that, but women's rights as well. And the women are, are gearing up that fight. Well, you said this with the transgender uh, being, uh, we went from don't ask, don't tell in the military to it's okay to be gay, and then for transgender folks too, oh yes, proudly serve your country, and then you have that flipped on your head and say, yes. uh, so let's not be complacent here, folks. Your rights are, if you're not fighting for them, then they're going to be lost because it's all about public perception and how easy it is for someone to manipulate your you're thinking here. So I, as, a, as someone who has managed public opinion, you, you can also see that the Constitution's only as strong as we all stand up and make it as strong as it can be. I put it this way, uh, to quote myself, if you're not playing the, the great game of politics, then you're being used as a pawn by someone who is. Well, we have a master communicator right now in the White House. He is able to <laughs> understand, he is able to get into the psyche of people and really, I don't know how he does it, um, I would say hypnosis, but he's hitting the nerve of people so that he's, that's still, it doesn't matter what he does, he has, he's got solid 40, maybe, maybe more 50% of the White House. I shudder to think that we may be in, you know, in, this is an easy re-election in case, unless the Democrats get, can't get their act together, and maybe that's something that you're thinking about all the time, too. Well, that debate, of course, is going on as we talk. Uh, what what they they plan on how they plan on moving forward? I don't know. Uh, I, I was with a, an old school friend actually who was over visiting last week, and and she is a uh, uh, has her PhD in psychology, but she's also was a teacher, and she taught uh, she began teaching in Arkansas, and uh, we were discussing this very thing: why are they attracted to Trump? He pointed out, in addition to, there have just been a lot of people left behind. Mm -hmm. NAFTA, so many factories closed, the rust creation of the Rust Belt, nothing took their place, the so-called flyover states. Rise of minority power. Yes. All of those things. Women's rights. And the uneducated who don't read the newspapers and only walk Fox News. It's, they've been there all along. It's just someone came along like Donald Trump who could, as you said, reach them. And speak to them very clearly. And I think it's important, I think, to realize that 
these are people of goodwill and uh, and are quality people that that they're seeing something in him that 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 we need to address, um, and not in the bad way, but in the good way. And I, I think that uh, Pete Buttigieg, uh, who is now number three in the polls, amazing, quickly rising. Yes, I think amazing. he's going to pass uh, Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden pretty clear here. And he says the same thing. He was reelected eighty percent in a red state in Indiana, right? And 80% of his electorate, uh, re after he came out, elected him, uh, re-elected him mayor, which I think is, uh, and it just shows you how far we've come as a people that maybe the gay issue isn't important as we thought it was. Um, I, don't, I don't know what his chances are, but he says, these are good people. They voted for the Donald for different reasons, and those reasons are the reasons we have to address, not yes. the Donald himself. And I think that that might be true. Let's not forget the Catholic Church and the Mormon Church especially in Hawaii, especially in Hawaii. Well, uh, you know, and, and again, on those things, we've seen religions changing, too, even the, 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 the Mormons. They've been changing their opinions over time uh, very slowly and not to our, our satisfaction, but it, it, it has shifted, as you've seen as well with all mainstream denominations. And I think to this point where the Methodists are going to split off and create their own American version of it because yes. they just said, we can't stomach this this discrimination and, and hatred anymore because that's what we're really looking at. And you know, you've been involved in this long enough. I just wonder what is your what are your thoughts about uh, Pete Buttigieg? I wanted to get that out there because I, do you <laughs> think that he stands a fighting chance? Is he too young? Is he too um, uh, too not gay enough? Too gay? Um, you know, what do you what do you think about him? Well, the one thing I know is is I don't have a clue simply because things are changing so quickly. Uh, the very fact that, that he exists and is out there saying the things he's saying, uh, brilliant young mind, handsome, uh, uh, able to have his husband there with him, all of those things, uh, we'll see. We'll see. I, I, I would vote for it. Yeah, well, you know, he's, he, I think what, what I read in one thing, what is it that we like about him? Yes, of course. The American people are we're, we're reasonably shallow people. I said it's, it depends on your necktie color. You know, it has to be you know, blue or red, <laughs> solid colors. Don't do don't put pinstripes or, or stripes or pinwheels or anything. It's just solid colors there. So he's got the the, the looks, the charm, the brains, um, the, the adoring uh, spouse, right? And uh, and he's also so articulate. He's been and he's a, a veteran. He's uh, you know, Rhodes Scholar, so, and he's got this executive experience. I'll be excited to see where this goes. We've, we've got so many great candidates in the field. Let's see if any of them can rise up against us because uh, for all the things that you've been, that you have, that you've worked on, and I would love for you to come back another time and talk um, about more of, uh, of what you've done because we just have barely touched on this, but I want you to talk about your mentors. When we, when we have another show, um, you've mentioned Joe Napoli, uh, uh, Napolitan and, and A.Q. McElthrath and um, and, and, and others uh, who have been influential on you. And I would love to talk about that another time. But for right now, um, I know you wanted to give a shout out to LGBTHawaii.com. So folks go to LGBTHawaii.com. It is the state's oldest and largest LGBT community political action organization. And Scott is the founder of that. You can find out more about Scott at scottfoster.org. And unfortunately, as, as our think tech shows are always too short, um, we are out of time for today. So will you come back again and talk more about this and many other issues um, that are Be happy to. Uh, in your heart and in your mind? I, I would love that. So thank you so much for, for being here today. And like I said, I really, uh, you're someone I can look up to and admire as, as, a, as a role model for me. So I appreciate uh, you setting well, an example. Thank you so much. You're very kind. Well, it, it's, it's, it's meaningful and, uh, and important. And Unfortunately, we are out of time, and we have to wrap it up there with uh, Luminary in, the, in, in, our, in our human rights arena here. I'm Winston Welch. This is Out and About on the Think Tech Live streaming network series. We have been talking just a little bit with Scott Foster, communication strategy consultant, public opinion management expert, and advocate for the LGBT and human community for decades. We thank you for tuning in. We welcome your feedback. Our awesome thanks to broadcast engineer Robert McLean, floor manager, the awesome Eric Lander, and to Jay Fidel, our executive producer, who puts it all together. I'll see you here every other Monday at 3 for more of Out and About on Think Tech Hawaii. Have a happy birthday. Aloha, everyone.